Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson. I am the CEO of Miami's Action Coach Business Coaching Firm, Team Sage, and the host of your Business Spotlight Miami, where we focus on the businesses that make Miami great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Leora Heyman, Managing Director of OBMI of the Spoke Architectural Firm, focused on the hospitality industry. Welcome, Leora. Hi, thank uh, before you. Before we dive into this interview, I just have to say how great it was to see your dad on your on your uh, LinkedIn account. 101 years old. You said audacity at any age. That is so great. How does your dad inspire you? Oh, that's an interesting question. He, As I think about him, he's inspired me because he has reinvented himself so many times in his life. Like he grew up as a German urban boy of middle class, then became a farmer in a kibbutz, then became a soldier in the British army during the war, then became an interior designer in Chile. And then in his nineties, he became a published writer. So it's, uh, I, I learned from him that he, there's always another opportunity to recreate yourself in any way. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So tell us, tell us about the firm. It's 85 years old. So you're clearly doing many things right over there at OBMI. So give us a description of the company and what makes the firm so unique. So yeah, our origin is in Bermuda about eight, eight decades ago and the company at the founders at that time, they uh, grew the company to become a Caribbean focused company designing all across the Caribbean, the Caribbean being a, you know, a tourism destination. This hospitality specialty started to develop and some around the early 2000s, the leaders at the time brought the headquarters to Miami to uh, uh, to the, evolve the company into a global company. And I'd mm -hmm. say we were one of the very first companies that were really working in a global uh, place across boundaries. Today, it's very common, but at that time in the early 2000s was a pioneering uh, approach, I'd say. So now our headquarters are in Miami and uh, we continue to evolve. You know, 85 years, as you say, is a, is a long time. So we continue to evolve. And that's uh, our role as leaders now is to bring the company to the next level into the future. We are designers, architects, planners, and we focus on the creation of luxury hotels and destinations. Our approach is really focusing on on quality design. We create places where guests can experience the spirit of the destination they're visiting. We call ourselves architects of storied places because the whole point is to express the nature of the place you're visiting, whether it's the, the landscape, the geography, the culture, the heritage. So our designs are really very contextual. We really dive into what it means to be in this place. And we all love to travel. We all love to design. And so we bring this all together. Does that the whole story of where somebody's going to be traveling to? Uh -huh, yeah. Great. How many people work in the firm, Leora? Well, we have a global footprint. We have um, 10 offices throughout the world. Some are larger, some are smaller. Miami, Dallas, Dubai, Riyadh, Egypt, Bermuda, BDI, Cayman, and Trinidad and Tobago. And in total, we're about 120 people. Mm -hmm. And um, we're very multicultural. Uh, I, I'd say that our staff represents between 36 and 40 different nationalities in all these different offices, maybe 18 to 20 languages. <laughs> so, a lot of fun <laughs> because you can even see the world throughout our, our staff. Um, and in Miami itself, where our headquarters are, we are about 45 people. Okay, great. And you're also in Egypt. We have a working team in Egypt, yes. That is so much going on in Egypt right now. Yes, correct. <laughs> okay, you have taken a stand at your firm on sustainability. Can you say a bit more about that and your corporate social responsibility program? Um, so us coming with our roots in, in the Caribbean uh, and working in islands, 
uh, where resources are limited, like water, for example, in an island, and there are natural resources or elements such as mangroves. So the whole design culture where we come from, from these 80 years in the past, is very much uh, embedded in looking at what's there and valuing what's there. So it's something that's coming from decades, this sustainability approach before the word sustainability even existed. So we continue this uh, tradition. And by that, we mean, as I say, respecting the geography, the culture, the nature that's in the place, the architectural styles. Um, a lot of our projects involve an existing old building that uh, is being re reintegrated and converted into a hotel or maybe incorporating mangrove areas or uh, designing something in the desert that respects the idea of the desert, such as um, uh, a tented destination, for example. Mm -hmm. OK, so the Simon Sinek says people don't care what you do or how you do what you do. They care why you do what you do. So why do you do what you do, Laura? So. <laughs> And I'd say that at OBI, OBMI, we, we're all driven by, by passion. Uh, design is a, is, is a passion, it's something people love to do. And uh, so there's a passion for design excellence. Um, there's a passion for travel and the discovery of new places and cultures and how to bring this together. So that's, I think it was, it's the really why, you know, the, the driver, the big driver. Now, hospitality and tourism are one of the, are two of the largest industries in the world. Hospitality having like almost 10 billion people working on it, travel almost 9 billion people. So it's a tremendous growth in this industry. Uh, even after COVID, even more, everybody wants to travel and uh, the world is global now, even as a, as a work environment. So it's a very exciting field to work in. And um, so that's where the why. Now, personally, I love design and I love management. And I started more as a designer. And as I evolved into manager position, I, I discovered I loved it. I love business. And so putting these two things together is, is really a, a great opportunity. The ability to merge design and, and business management has been a great adventure. That's uh, kind of the right brain, left brain. So yeah. you have both. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right, so who's an ideal client for your firm? Uh, okay, ideal client. So I'd say an ideal client has to, would have a combination of, of characteristics. Uh, one would be, of course, to be a, to a certain extent a visionary who believes in the power of design, in the uh, power of creating a unique destination. We need that to in order to um, elevate our ideas. Um, I think we'd like to have a client who understands the value of the local culture, heritage, landscape, because that is this is part of our design culture. Um, we'd like a client who understands the business of hospitality. We have we find visionary clients who then later don't understand the business of it, and then we have to redesign everything again. So we'd like that to be you know merged. Sometimes it's two people because it's as you said the left and the right brain, and we have to sort of bridge. Um, and then I think on more on the personal side, a person who who can listen, who respects the value of what we do who can understand the design process is evolution and iteration is not just a straight line to a product and that values the discussion, the interaction, the exploration, the discovery process in the design process. It's complex, but it's very rich if we make it complex. <laughs> okay. So what would you say were the opportunities and challenges of the firm in, during the pandemic? And how did you overcome them? Um, so during the pandemic, we were already a global company. We already had other offices. We, in our projects, we were, we've always worked globally because the finance may be in one side of the world. The site is in a different place. We are in Miami. Our uh, consultants, engineers are somewhere else in the US. So we already had a culture of working through Zoom and uh, sort of having um, a, a, a interaction that's not physical. 
However, I think during the pandemic, that was elevated to its maximum. <laughs> I think we travel less for meetings. We definitely have initial meetings with our clients to really get the personal rapport, but then everybody's more comfortable. Even our clients are more comfortable doing certain things remote. So I'd say that during the pandemic, the adjustment was relatively fast for us. People working from yeah. home, yeah. Um, we took care of the office. We made sure we had space. So we had people who wanted to come to the office could come to the office. I never left the office practically. Um, so, so we were very flexible. And um, I'd say after the pandemic, as I say, everybody became, including our clients, more flexible in the ways to interact, which is uh, very positive, less expensive and more balanced work life. And I think we are all moving into a hybrid work style in which we have some flexibility working either from office or uh, from home. And our schedule allows that for people to work a certain amount of time from home if they need to, or if they want to. And so the, what are the biggest challenges in the business right now? So our, oops, sorry for that. That's calling me for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we are guided by some key pillars. Design excellence is one of our pillars, innovation, growth, and culture. And I'd say that currently, these are all interwoven, but I'd say that currently growth poses very interesting challenges because we're managing rapid growth and we have to make sure that it happens in consistency, in balance with our design excellence, our innovation and our maintaining our culture. So one thing that's happened, we have expanded rapidly our offices in Dubai and Dallas because of how the market is these days. So working very seamlessly across borders and keeping our company culture, that's been an interesting uh, uh, challenge because it's very fast, right? Um, then we're also transitioning leadership to a younger generation. Uh, wow. and that is a very interesting challenge as well, because we have to identify the right people, train the right people. It's a process. And we have, uh, we are, we have a very intentional process doing that, but it is work and it is challenging, but it's extremely interesting. And then also as we grow in size, uh, bringing in the best talent, um, now we have the world as a pool to bring in the best talent, um, but we also have to know how to bring them in into our culture and our design excellence principles, even if they're farther away. So growth poses this, you know, the, the intercommunication and cultural aspects, maintaining the design excellence, bringing in best talent and transitioning leadership. Mm -hmm. Those are the aspects. Very, very clear. What's inspiring you the most about business these days? Um, I think I think for me the the places we work in, the sites, the locations are always inspiring. I think we're working in luxury destinations, so the destinations are per se an interesting place. We travel there in person, sometimes via Google Earth. But they're always fascinating. And uh, that ignites the inspiration for the work we do on the design aspect, on the project uh, conception aspect. And then more on the management aspect, it's people. People, you know, they, 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 I think in OBMI, we have great talent, great people who are passionate, interested, committed, who work hard. Um, and that is always inspiring. And we have to take care of them, ensure that they have a good life and that they are recognized for their talents. Um, but that's also very inspiring. Yeah, I'm also, I, I think I also, right now in this phase of my life, I'm also inspired and care about the women coming up into leadership. I think I'm in a phase of life where giving, you know, legacy uh, or passing on is important. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was seeing something in one of your posts about how in school there were not very many women in the upper echelons of your studies, right? Correct. So, yeah, yeah. We're making a difference in that way these days, for sure. Yeah. Committed to that. So what would you say is the most important thing you've learned since you started your career? Wow. 
I wouldn't say one most important thing. It's we learn so many things along the way. So at the beginning, learning is more about the content of what we do, like design, you know, how to design, what to do, what, what's the best approach, techniques, approaches. Uh, uh, but I'd say that a good, important discovery for me, more like in midlife, was this transitioning into management and really discovering that I love it and that architects can do so many things and being able to bridge between the designer mentality and the business management mentality, which are very different, is very important because we have to respect both for a design company to be successful. It cannot be driven just by the business side because it's a creative Field, mm -hmm. creative. So being able to bridge, I find that uh, a great discovery that having the ability to do that and the ability to work with people, to lead teams and finding my own leadership style, right, which is mine and not others. Everybody has their own. But uh, I, I thought I think that looking back, I think that's been an amazing ride. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as we wrap up the interview, are there any parting thoughts that you want to share? Uh, I'd say, uh, yeah, I'd say travel. Uh, part of travel and recognizing other places, cultures, and destinations uh, un unifies the world, creates a platform for dialogue. Uh, we understand each other better. So I think that's uh, very important as, as a general message to everybody. And, uh, and to learn to value beautiful things, to be, even they don't have to be expensive, but the value of design is so important because uh, it creates uh, well-being. Um, and so I, I give that message. And third is, um, yeah, the team, team, respect your team, drive them strongly to where we need to go, to the product we need to create, but uh, in, a, in a respectful manner as well. Yeah. I remember being in the Middle East and recognizing that we're so much more alike than we are different. Yes. So it I does think... create that, that sense of, that we are one around yes. the world. Yes, exactly. Said. Well, thank you so much for your time, Lior, and the difference that you're making, you know, both for your clients and in our community and in our world. And uh, you can learn more about OBMI at their website, obmi.com. And this is Business Spotlight Miami, where we're interviewing the business leaders that make Miami great. Lior, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for the interview. Thank you, all the listeners. <laughs> our website, <laughs> Love Design, come work for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.